Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast, episode number 116, Setting Your Hockey Season Goals. Have you set yours yet? Presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Pitlick. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we start writing the script for what we want to accomplish for this upcoming winter hockey season and begin this conversation, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon and you want to schedule an in-person off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's Sweet hockeycoach.com and watch the video on the home page for instructions. Thanks and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. The kids are back in school. Most leaves have turned, fell to the ground, and snow, at least here in Minnesota, has already fallen. And that can mean only one thing, that the winter hockey season has begun. When thinking back when I was a player, when fall finally arrived, I remember being so sick of working out and doing the same old routine. We players need a carrot to chase, and that carrot goes by the name of games in the hockey world. Since the season is at the beginning, let me ask you a question. Do you regularly write down your goals that you have, both short and long-term ones? For instance, did you set and write down what you wanted to accomplish for the summer? If you did, did you achieve everything you wanted to accomplish? Or did you just bounce around from thing to thing, not really accomplishing anything other than the bare minimum? For me, physically writing down my goals has been going on since I was in high school. I can't remember who suggested I start doing it when I was younger, but whoever did, I can't thank you enough because it works. In the fast-paced and ever-evolving world of hockey, goal setting isn't just a crucial component, it's the very essence of the game. From that first childhood dream of stepping onto the ice to hoisting the Stanley Cup, every player's journey begins with a vision, a goal, and aspiration. But goal setting isn't limited to the elite athletes. It's a practice that can empower anyone, whether you're a young player just starting or a seasoned pro reaching for new heights in your career. In this episode, we'll explore why setting goals matter in hockey and how it can shape your journey both on and off the ice. For me, just writing down the goals on a piece of paper wasn't enough for me to consistently accomplish the goals I was setting. I'd write down the goals I wanted to accomplish on a piece of paper right before the hockey season was going to start. Then I'd put the piece of paper in an envelope, seal it, date the back, and wrote, do not open until the season was finished. When I read, heard, or was introduced to writing down goals, I can't recall, but what I eventually learned was that writing down your goals was one part of the process. The second part was putting it somewhere you can read what you wrote down on that piece of paper consistently, several times a day, at the very least, in the morning when you wake up, and again before you go to bed. This is your constant reminder to keep asking yourself the question at the end of each day, did I move the needle a little forward to my goal today? The final steps are to figure out how many days you have to accomplish your target, what are the action steps you're going to take on a weekly basis, and all that's left is for you to execute the plan you created. I can't tell you how many times I wanted to chase after something, but when reflecting 30, 60, or 90 days later, I realized that the needle never moved much after the first week or two, resulting in not even getting close to what I hoped for. If I'm completely honest with myself during one of those situations, pretty much every time my lack of success resulted from laziness, scattered focus, and not having a plan. It basically was just a wish. You know by now that I'm a regular consumer of books. I try to read at least five to 10 pages every day before I go to bed. I don't hit the target every day, but rarely do I go two days in a row without some book consumption. So many of the strategies I've learned and implemented into my life to be more productive and happier, I've learned through books. If you struggle from time to time to accomplish what you think and dream about, maybe I can help. 
Now, I'm not an expert on goal setting, but there are many out there that have made it their life's work and have written books regarding their findings and best practices to set and achieve your goals. Again, books have been an inspiration for me over the years, and I'd like to share with you some quotes that have guided me in the past to accomplish more today than I did yesterday. I'll put the links to each of the titles in the description if something really resonated with you and you wanted to pick up a copy of your own. With that being said, let's begin. Book number one, Psycho-Cybernetics, a new technique for using your subconscious power by Maxwell Maltz. Quote number one, creative striving for a goal that is important to you as a result of your own deep felt needs aspirations and talents, and not the symbols which the Joneses expect you to display, brings happiness as well as success because you will be functioning as you were meant to function. Man is by nature a goal-striving being, and because man is built that way, he is not happy unless he is functioning the way he is made to function, as a goal-striver. Thus, true success and true happiness not only go together, but each enhances the other. End quote. Quote number two, cybernetics, servo mechanisms, and you. The word cybernetics comes from a Greek word which means literally the steersman. Servo mechanisms are so constructed that they automatically steer their way to a goal, target, or answer. When we conceive of the human brain and nervous system as a form of servo mechanism, operating with cybernetic principles, we gain a new insight into the why and wherefore of human behavior. I chose to call this new concept psychocybernetics, the principles of cybernetics as applied to the human brain. End quote. Quote number three, the success instinct. A squirrel does not have to be taught how to gather nuts, nor does it need to learn that it should store them for the winter. A squirrel born in the spring has never experienced winter, yet in the fall of the year it can be observed busily storing nuts to be eaten during the winter months when there will be no food to be gathered. A bird does not need to take lessons in nest building, nor does it need to take courses in navigation, yet birds do navigate thousands of miles, sometimes over open sea. They have no newspapers or TVs to give them weather reports. No books written by explorer or pioneer birds to map out for them the warm areas of the earth. Nonetheless, the bird knows when cold weather is imminent and the exact location of a warm climate, even though it may be thousands of miles away. End quote. Quote number four, imagination, the first key. A human being always acts and feels and performs in accordance with what he imagines to be true about himself and his environment. For imagination sets the goal, picture, which our automatic mechanism works on. We act or fail to act, not because of will, as so commonly believed, but because of imagination. Your nervous system cannot tell the difference between an imagined experience and a real experience. Imagine how you would feel if you were already the sort of personality you wanted to be. If you have been shy and timid, see yourself moving among people with ease and poise and feeling good because of it. If you have been fearful and anxious in certain situations, see yourself acting calmly and deliberately, acting with confidence and courage and feeling expansive and confident because you are. This exercise builds new memories of stored data into your midbrain and central nervous system. It builds a new image of self. After practicing it for a time, you'll be surprised to find yourself acting differently, more or less automatically and spontaneously, without trying. End quote. Bonus quote number five. Dehypnotize yourself. It is no exaggeration to say that every human being is hypnotized to some extent, either by ideas he has uncritically accepted from others or ideas he has repeated to himself or convinced himself are true. These negative ideas have exactly the same effect upon our behavior 
as the negative ideas implanted into the mind of a hypnotized subject by a professional hypnotist. Within you, whoever you may be, regardless of how big a failure you may think yourself to be, is the ability and the power to do whatever you need to do to be happy and successful. Within you right now is the power to do things you never dreamed possible. This power becomes available to you just as soon as you change your beliefs. End quote. Bonus quote number six, rational thought. In short, conscious rational thought selects the goal, gathers information, concludes, evaluates, estimates, and starts the wheels in motion. It is not, however, responsible for results. We must learn to do our work, act upon the best assumptions possible, and leave results to take care of themselves. Because modern man does depend almost entirely upon his forebrain, he becomes too careful, too anxious, and too fearful of results. And the advice of Jesus too, take no thought for tomorrow, or St. Paul, to be careful in nothing, is regarded as impractical nonsense. End quote. Bonus quote number seven, natural behavior and trusting yourself. Skill in any performance, whether it be in sports, in playing the piano, in conversation, or in selling merchandise, consists not in painfully and consciously thinking out each action as it is performed, but in relaxing and letting the job do itself through you. Creative performance is spontaneous and natural, as opposed to self-conscious and studied. End quote. Bonus quote number eight. Wear the habit of happiness. Our self-image and our habits tend to go together. Change one and you will automatically change the other. The word habit originally meant a garment or clothing. Our habits are literally garments worn by our personalities. They are not accidental or happenstance. We have them because they fit us. They are consistent with our self-image and our entire personality pattern. When we consciously and deliberately develop new and better habits, our self-image tends to outgrow the old habits and grow into the new pattern. End quote. Bonus quote number nine. What are your goals? We are engineered as goal-seeking mechanisms. We are built that way. When we have no personal goal which we are interested in and which means something to us, we are apt to go around in circles, feel lost, and find life itself aimless and purposeless. We are built to conquer the environment, solve problems, achieve goals, and we find no real satisfaction or happiness in life without obstacles to conquer and goals to achieve. People who say that life is not worthwhile are really saying that they themselves have no personal goals which are worthwhile. Prescription? Get yourself a goal worth working for. A bicycle maintains its poise and equilibrium only as long as it's going forward towards something. You have a good bicycle. Your trouble is you are trying to maintain your balance sitting still with no place to go. It's no wonder you feel shaky. End quote. Bonus quote number 10. Nobody's right all the time. Realize that it is not required that a man be 100% right all the time. No baseball batter has ever had a 1,000 average. If he is right three times out of 10, he is considered good. The great Babe Ruth, who holds the record for the most home runs, also holds the record for the most strikeouts. It is in the nature of things that we progress by acting, making mistakes, and correcting course. End quote. And bonus quote number 11. Feel successful. And if there is one simple secret to the operation of your unconscious creative mechanism, it is this. Call up, capture, evoke the feeling of success. When you feel successful and self-confident, you will act successfully. When the feeling is strong, you can literally do no wrong. Simply define your goal or end result. Picture it to yourself clearly and vividly. Then simply capture the feeling you would experience if the desirable goal were already an accomplished fact. 
Then you are acting spontaneously and creatively. Then you are using the powers of your subconscious mind. Then your internal machinery is geared for success to guide you in making the correct muscular motions and adjustments, to supply you with creative ideas, and to do whatever else is necessary in order to make the goal an accomplished fact. End quote. Book number two, Maximum Achievement. Strategies and Skills That Will Unlock Your Hidden Powers to Succeed. By Brian Tracy. Quote number one. The system you are about to learn can change your life. This book contains a unique synthesis of ideas, methods, and techniques brought together in one place for the first time. The individual components, however, are not new. They have been learned and relearned throughout all ages of man. These principles and practices have been tested and proven by millions of men and women, and all great success is based on them. By integrating these ideas and methods into your daily life, you will feel happier, healthier, and more self-confident. You will experience a greater sense of power, purpose, and self-direction. You will be more positive, more focused, and more able to achieve your goals. You will get along better with the important people in your life. You will be more successful in your career, and you will feel wonderful about yourself. You will learn how to unlock the great untapped reserves of potential that lie deep within you. By practicing the exercises, you will get results out of all proportion to the effort you put in. You will propel your whole life onto a higher road of success, achievement, and greater happiness than perhaps you've ever known. End quote. Quote number two, how to make your life a masterpiece. You must start with your ideal, your vision of a perfect future. You begin unlocking your inner powers by lifting up your eyes and seeing your life exactly as if it were already perfect in every respect. Your first job is to create a blueprint, a clear picture of where you are going and what it will look like when you get there. This image will then serve as an organizing principle, a guide, a benchmark, against which you can measure and compare everything you do in the process of turning it into your reality. Defining the seven ingredients of success gives you a series of targets to aim at. When you define your life in ideal terms, when you have the courage to decide exactly what you want, you begin the process of unlocking your hidden powers to succeed. Knowing where you want to end up is the first and most important step. End quote. Quote number three, the law of substitution. This is one of the most important mental laws. It is an extension of the law of control. It states that your conscious mind can hold only one thought at a time and that you can substitute one thought for another. This crowding out principle allows you to deliberately replace a negative thought with a positive thought. In doing so, you take control of your emotional life. This law is your key to happiness, to a positive mental attitude, and to personal liberation. It can change your relationships, your conversations, and the predominant content of your conscious mind. Many people have told me this law alone has changed their lives. Your conscious mind is never empty. It is always occupied with something. By using the law of substitution, you can replace any negative or fearful thought that may be troubling you you can deliberately substitute a positive thought in its place. End quote. Quote number four. Got any acres of diamonds? The merchant picked up the stone and said, This is a diamond of great price and value. The new farmer was skeptical, but the merchant insisted that he show him where he had found the diamond. They went out on the farm to where the farmer had been watering the donkey, and as they looked around, they found another diamond, and another, and another. It turned out that the whole farm was covered with acres of diamonds. The old farmer had gone off into Africa, seeking for diamonds without ever looking under his own feet. The moral of the story is that the old farmer did not realize that the diamonds did not look like diamonds in their rough form. They simply looked like rocks to the uneducated eye. A diamond must be cut, faceted, 
polished, and set before it looks like the kind of diamond that you would see in the jewelry stores. Likewise, your acres of diamonds probably lie right under your own feet, but they usually are disguised as hard work. Opportunities come dressed in work clothes. Your acres of diamonds probably lie in your own talents, your interests, your education, your background and experience, your industry, your city, your contacts. Your acres of diamonds probably lie right under your own feet if you will take the time to recognize them and then go to work on them. End quote. Bonus quote number five. Seven questions that can change your life. Plus bonus? Whatever you wrote as an answer to any of these questions, including the question, what one great thing would you dare to dream if you knew you could not fail, you can be, have, or do? The very fact that you could write it means that you can achieve it. Once you've identified what it is you want, the only question you have to answer is, do I want it badly enough, and am I willing to pay the price? Take a few minutes to write out your answers to each of these seven questions. Once you have your answers on paper, go over them and select just one as your major, definite purpose in life right now. End quote. Here are the seven questions that can change your life if you wanted to answer them. Number one, what are your five most important values in life? Number two, what are your three most important goals in life right now? Number three, what would you do, how would you spend your time, if you learned that today you only had six months to live? Number four, what would you do if you won a million dollars cash, tax-free, in the lottery tomorrow? Number five, what have you always wanted to do, but have been afraid to attempt? Number six, what do you most enjoy doing? What gives you the greatest feeling of self-esteem and personal satisfaction? And question number seven. What one great thing would you dare to dream if you knew you could not fail? Well, what are your answers to those questions? I highly recommend you take a few minutes and do this exercise. Moving along. Bonus quote number six. Why settle for positive thinking? Go for positive knowing. The most important contribution you can make to your success and happiness is to develop the habit of continuous goal setting. The key to developing this habit is learning how to deliberately set and achieve one clear, challenging goal. When you have set a specific goal for yourself and then achieved it according to your plans, you change from having an attitude of positive thinking to possessing an attitude of positive knowing. You must reach the point in your own mind where you know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you can accomplish any goal you set for yourself. From that point on, you are a different person. You are the master of your fate. End quote. Bonus quote number seven. Got excusitis? A simple way to test your excuses. Here's a simple way to test your excuses. Ask yourself, is there anyone anywhere with my problem or limitation who has succeeded in spite of it? If the answer is yes, you know that your excuse is not valid. It is not a legitimate reason for your failure to make progress. What one person has done, someone else can do as well. The disease of excusitis, the inflammation of the excuse-making gland, is invariably fatal to success. If you have it, Resolve to get over it right away before it sabotages all your hopes for great success. End quote. And bonus quote number eight. Love, the secret sauce. Love is the beginning and the end. Your purpose in life is to become a totally loving person. Life is a study of attention. It is a matter of priorities of choice. Your life is what you make of it by the priorities you set and the things you choose to focus your attention upon. Your job is to live joyously, and this is only possible by filling your mind with thoughts of love, compassion, and forgiveness. Only one life that soon is past, only what's done with love will last. This is the secret of the ages, the true foundation of all human greatness. It is the core value and the most essential unifying principle of truly exceptional people. And the most wonderful thing about love 
is that you can fill your life with it by deciding to do so. The choice is yours. It's always been. I wish you luck. I wish you success and happiness. Above all, I wish you love. End quote. And book number three, The Magic of Thinking Big. Acquire the Secrets of Success, Achieve Everything You've Always Wanted by David J. Schwartz. Quote number one, Think big and you'll live big. You'll live big in happiness. You'll live big in accomplishment, big in income, big in friends, big in respect. Start now, right now, to discover how to make your thinking make magic for you. Start now with this thought from the great philosopher Disraeli. Life is too short to be little. End quote. Quote number two. Believe big. Here is the first step toward success. It's a basic step. It can't be avoided. Step one. Believe in yourself. Believe you can succeed. End quote. Quote number three, excusitis. Go deep into your study of people and you'll discover unsuccessful people suffer a mind-deadening thought disease. We call this disease excusitis. Every failure has this disease in its advanced form, and most average persons have at least a mild case of it. End quote. Quote number four. Stickability. Just enough sense to stick with something, a chore, task, project, until it's completed, pays off much better than idle intelligence, even if idle intelligence be of genius caliber. Stickability is 95% of ability. End quote. Bonus quote number five. Action cures fear. Fear of all kinds and sizes is a form of psychological infection. We can cure a mental infection the same way we cure a body infection, with specific, proven treatments. Condition yourself with this fact. All confidence is acquired, developed. No one is born with confidence. Those people around you who radiate confidence, who have conquered worry, who are at ease everywhere and all the time, acquired their confidence, every bit of it. Action cures fear. Indecision, postponement, on the other hand, fertilize fear. Jot that down in your success rule book right now. Action cures fear. Hesitation only enlarges, magnifies the fear. Take action promptly. Be decisive. End quote. Bonus quote number six. Memory bank deposits. Deposit only positive thoughts in your memory bank. Let's face it squarely, everyone encounters plenty of unpleasant, embarrassing, and discouraging situations. But unsuccessful and successful people deal with these situations in directly opposite ways. Unsuccessful people take them to heart, so to speak. They dwell on the unpleasant situations, thereby giving them a good start in their memory. At night, the unpleasant situation is the last thing they think about. Confident, successful people, on the other hand, don't give it another thought. Successful people specialize in putting positive thoughts into their memory bank. End quote. Bonus quote number seven. To think confidently, act confidently. To think confidently, act confidently. Act the way you want to feel. Motions are the precursors of emotions. End quote. Bonus quote number eight. Impossible? Huh? Eliminate the word impossible from your thinking and speaking vocabularies. Impossible is a failure word. The thought, it's impossible, sets off a chain reaction of other thoughts to prove you're right. End quote. Bonus quote number nine. Be an experimental person. Be an experimental person. Break up fixed routines. Expose yourself to new restaurants, new books, new theaters, new friends. Take a different route to work someday. Take a different vacation this year. Do something new and different this weekend. End quote. Bonus quote number 10. 
Capture ideas. Don't let ideas escape. Write them down. Every day lots of good ideas are born only to die quickly because they aren't nailed to paper. Carry a notebook or some small card with you. When you get an idea, write it down. People with fertile, creative minds know a good idea may sprout at any time, any place. Don't let ideas escape, else you'll destroy the fruits of your thinking. End quotes. Bonus quote number 11. Compromise with perfection. We must be willing to make an intelligent compromise with perfection, lest we wait forever before taking action. End quotes. Bonus quote number 12. Good ideas need action. A good idea, if not acted upon, produces terrible psychological pain. But a good idea acted upon brings enormous mental satisfaction. Got a good idea? Then do something about it. Use action to cure fear and gain confidence. Here's something to remember. Actions feed and strengthen confidence. Inaction, in all forms, feeds fear. To fight fear, act. To increase fear, wait, put off, postpone. End quote. Hockey dreams, we all have them, and they are all different for all of us. My hope is that after listening to all of that goodness, which, by the way, was pretty compelling evidence, if you haven't ever wrote down your hockey goals, both long and short-term ones, that you'll give goal setting a try in order to optimize your process, your habits, and increase your odds for success. So start writing down your goals. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed this segment on goal setting and you're excited for your new possibilities. If you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon and do me a favor. Make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.